Hello everyone. On this video, I will talk about the p-value and the t-statistic. So, uh, as a part of uh, our topic, which is topic one, which is the introduction, review of probability and review of uh, statistics, uh, one of the important uh, parts, which is performing hypothesis test. Any um, time you want to check, for example, whether the average or the mean of the sample is equal specific uh, value, let's uh, say um, 30, okay? And the mean of the population, which is the truth, suppose that this number is equal to 32, for example. Suppose I'm talking about um, a certain uh, earning per hour, so $30 per hour, you got it from a sample, um, so this is your sample, and let's say you have a group of people, let's say you, the number of your sample or the number of observations or the number of people, let's say 20 uh, people, right? And then, uh, and then you have a population. The population is the bigger version of the sample, which you cannot uh, get all the information about, but let's say you know that uh, let's say this population is the capital N, which is the number of observations in the population. Suppose that this number is 500, you cannot get all the information, um, and that's why you get a smaller uh, sample so that you can compute. But let's say you know that it's average, which is mu. Uh, mu here is the average of the population is 32. Okay, so you want to test, you want to perform a hypothesis test. Hypothesis test means that you have a null hypothesis and you have an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is you're talking about whether the expectation of the average I got is equal to the truth, right? Uh, let's call this mu y, mu y, or, uh, or the alternative is that it is not equal. So th in this way, it's a two-sided test, right? Equal or not equal. We didn't say like a greater or... So, uh, so you, have, you have a certain hypothesis that you want to test, okay? And uh, in order to check this hypothesis, whether it's true or not, you have two ways, you have two uh, methods. You, you can use uh, a p-value or you can use the t uh, statistic. P-value is percentages or you can use it as numbers, okay? The p-value is the area under the standard normal distribution um, graph and the p-value and the t-statistic is actually the numbers that you have here, okay? So the t-statistic is the number, the p is the percentage of the shaded area under the graph. So this is just like a broad idea of what uh, we will be talking about. So how to calculate this p-value? So we know that uh, the probability distribution of y-bar or the sampling distribution of y-bar under the null hypothesis is distributed as follows. We assume that this y-bar is distributed as normal with an average, we call it mu y, and a, stand, uh, and a variance of sigma y bar square. Okay, so this is under the null. We assume that it has a standard uh, normal distribution with a certain mean and a certain uh, variance. Okay, so as we did in the previous uh, video, if I want to standardize it, then I have to take the mean out and divide by the standard deviation. So to do that, we, uh, we again subtract the mean out and we divide by the standard deviation or the square root of the variance sigma square y bar, and in this situation we say, okay, it's distributed as normal, right, 0, 1. Now this is the standardized version of this one, okay? So the p-value now, we want to check, okay, uh, the area under a standard normal uh, graph, and this 
area which is the shaded region under the plus or minus I hope like it looks accurate but it just it's not easy okay uh, so this point here is y bar minus mu y over the square root of uh, uh, sigma square so you can write it as sigma y bar and you uh, have suppose that this number is negative by the end and you need to put this the absolute value and we have the same equation but with a negative sign we are on the negative side right y bar minus mu y over sigma y bar and again with an absolute value so the p-value is this shaded region, right? We have two parts because we have two-sided test. So the p-value is the shaded standard normal tail uh, probability outside this and this, which is this part and this one. So you can write it as the p-value is the uh, shaded so the p-value is the shaded uh, standard normal tail probability outside the plus or minus the absolute value of y bar minus mu y over sigma y bar okay in other words it's this part plus this part okay so how can uh, we write it down as we did in the previous uh, video you can write it this way so the p-value is equal to the probability under the null of all the points or this gap which is the difference between um, the average I computed from uh, my sample minus mu y over the standard deviation of y bar and how far this gap or the standardized gap from the y bar I actually computed from my sample for sigma y bar and again we have here absolute value okay um, and to explain this last line it's like you have a sample right and you have observation let's say n observations of 20 people and you ask them how much you earn um, per hour let's say and suppose that they said okay on average you computed their average uh, and then they said uh, this average is let's say I'm just gonna make any number uh, 42 okay and this was your first time uh, taking this random sample suppose you call this first time y bar actually and suppose that you know that the true population average is equal to 40 so that means uh, y bar actual minus mu y is a gap of two dollars an hour right so the suppose this is an hour this is an hour per hour and this is per hour so you have computed uh, an average of 42 which is only two dollars away from the truth you want to check if you can repeat this experiment uh, like 100 times can I get something less than 2? Suppose that you repeat it another time and this other time you call it y bar 1 and you got a number which is 43 per hour. This is even worse because the gap is bigger. I want to be close to the 40, right? You, you done it another time taking another sample of 20 people and you call it y bar 2 and this another sample is 41. This is actually better than the actual one. This is worse than the actual one. Suppose you repeat it again and this time is the third time and you got number that is um, 37 
okay, I have a gap again of negative uh, 3, so it's even worse. So the first one, uh, when I say negative 3, then in absolute value, then it's going to be 3, so the gap is still, f you're farther away from the uh, true population parameter. So that means this is uh, the first one, then we call it actual, and then we keep repeating this. Suppose that you keep repeating this for y bar 4, you keep going until y bar 100. So you want to check out of 100 times how many times I can get a gap that is smaller than 2. Okay, so this is the idea. So let's say this is the uh, your trial okay how many times I can keep repeating this experiment I can replace this y bar by one two three four five all the way up to hundred but this is always going to be my war by actual the original one which is 42 okay remember that the y the mu y doesn't change any time so here I have it as 40 here I have it as 40 suppose my just for uh, simplicity suppose that this number is 1 okay so just for simplicity so now uh, what you want to do is you want to perform the uh, the, the p-value uh, statistic so how can you do that so as we said in uh, the previous video suppose this one I can write it in a simpler way and um, I can call this like anything, right? This I can call it Z, like what we did in the previous um, uh, video. So I can call it uh, Z. So in other words, what's the probability of getting a Z greater than certain number? Or I can write it this way. What's the probability? So the p-value is... Uh, equal to um, 2 times phi of the negative of the absolute value of y bar actual minus mu y over sigma y bar. Why 2? Because I have a two-sided test, right? I have um, a part that is on the positive part Right? I have a positive part and I have a negative part. Uh, so the idea is what's the probability of the shaded region, like what is the area of this tail. So if you get one, right, uh, then you, you get this one and then you multiply it times two because it's symmetric. So you get the two parts. So let's take this example. Suppose that... I have y bar actual is equal to 56. I have the true population parameter is 54. I have sigma y is 52. And I have a sample size of 200. And I'm asking you to compute the p-value. So to compute the p-value, you know it's a two-sided test. Right, we start with the two-sided test for simplicity, and it's the default in theta. So two times uh, the area under the graph less or equal to fifty-six minus fifty-four, right, over sigma one. I'm sorry, uh, over. 52 divided by the square root of 200, right? And then you close the absolute value, and you close this one. And you can simplify it, so it's 2 times all the points which are less than negative. You, if you compute this one, so it's going to be like negative 0.544. And what you need to do is to go to uh, your table. So to this phi, you go to the table, the z table, and you find here 0 
five and then you go to the four and then you go here and you find the number uh, here so you will find it as 0 0.7054 uh, and you write it here 0 0.7054 right and then you multiply it times 2 then it's going to be uh, sorry 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 this is like done so once you get it from under the uh, from under the table you don't have to write this notation okay and then this is like 2 and one second Okay, so and then uh, my computer went into a sleep mode, so I just wanted to make sure that it's still recording. Okay, so and then you got this 1.41. Uh, okay, so this would be uh, the answer for uh, the p uh, value. Okay. All right, so um, uh, okay, so for the t statistic. Suppose that um, let me show you the t-statistic. So the t-statistic is actually simple after the p-value because actually the t-statistic is this part, this part. Okay, so. Um, so you can write it like the t statistic is equal to the gap between y bar minus mu y over uh, the standard error of y bar. You can write it this way. And the standard error is simply the uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So you can write it this way, y bar minus mu y over uh, s for the standard deviation divided by the square root of m. Okay. Uh, so it is basically, again, another statistic that is used to perform hypothesis testing. Uh, when the sample size is large, we always look for a large sample size. Um, in um, Theoretically, we say large sample uh, that is usually like 30 observations or more. So any number that is 30 or more, then we consider it as a large sample. Uh, in this course, we will be working with large sample all the time. So, um, so uh, you can always, uh, whenever we have a large sample, we can approximate using the standard normal uh, distribution. Okay, so... Um, in other words, as you see it in um, your textbook, anytime we have a large sample, this is good because the uh, sample variance converges in probability or gets very close uh, to the population variance. Uh, also, the uh, sample standard deviation, if this is the sample variance and this is the population variance, then again, the square root also would converge. So you can write it this way, that Sy converges also in probability to sigma y. Okay, so um, anytime we have a large sample or the sample size is 30 or more, then we can approximate it by a standard normal distribution okay so um, recall from just what we uh, had in the previous slide when I say that the p-value is equal to 2 uh, times this phi negative absolute value of y bar actual minus mu y over the standard error of y bar um, Okay, then just you can simplify your life and say, okay, then this is like, I can write it as the t, right? You can write as t, and if, if this is y bar actual, I can call this t actual, and then you close the absolute value, and 
this way. Okay, so anytime you're computing the t-statistic, you are implicitly computing the. Uh, anytime you're computing the p-value, you're implicitly uh, computing the t-statistic. So let's say here, this is actually the t-statistic, right? This is the t-statistic. So you are actually computing the t-statistic in your way or in your steps of computing the p-value. So that's why anytime you're computing, uh, you have the option of performing hypothesis test using either p-value or t-statistic. It is always easier to compute it by t-statistic if you have uh, if you have the the choice. Okay, because it's uh, it's simply um, it's easier. So uh, if I'm uh, giving you uh, this example and uh, suppose that um, suppose that y bar actual is equal to 102.35 and the mu y is equal to 100 and the uh, sy which is the standard deviation of the sample is 37.17 and you have a sample of 1500 then the t-statistic is simply how far this 102.35 from the true, which is 100, right? And I standardize this by divided by dividing by the standard deviation, right? So 3717 divided by the square root of 1,500, and this would give me 2.47, okay? So when you get this 2.47 or when you get, let's say, a number like uh, this one, then you need to uh, say something about it. You need to compute. You need, I mean, to compare it with a certain benchmark. So I, in, um, in performing hypothesis uh, test, right, we said we have two options. Either you can use the p-value right, or the t statistic, you get a certain number, you get a, uh, this would be in percent, right, this would be a certain number, uh, remember the p-value is always a certain percentage under the graph, uh, I'm sorry, it's always the tails, so let me just remove the middle part, so it's the tails of the standard normal distribution, right, And the t statistic is a number, so it's not like here. It's going to be like here, okay? So you can, whenever you perform a hypothesis uh, test and you have a question in the exam or an assignment, you can do p-value or you can do t statistic. It's either or. You can answer it in terms of percentages or in terms of number. It all depends on what you uh, prefer. But sometimes I would ask you to do both. So what can you say uh, about the p-value? I got a certain number. How can I compare it? What is my benchmark? So the p-value is always compared with something called the significance level. Okay, again, it's in percent, and this one is in percent. The t-statistic, which is a number, is com compared with something called the critical value. Okay, so, um, so your benchmark with the p-value is the significance level. Your benchmark with the t-statistic is your uh, critical value. So uh, let's say if the p-value is greater than the significance level, right? Suppose that significance level is 5%, which is our default, and suppose the p-value is 7%. So there is a high probability that the null is true, the null hypothesis is true. So whenever I have a high p-value, and again, when you ask me what is high, high is higher, than significance level, which is our benchmark. So we can say here the p-value is high or higher 
then our benchmark which is the significance level so that means there is a high probability that null is true high probability that the null hypothesis is true and if there is a high probability that the null is true then we actually accept the null or you can say fail to reject null so the null is true so you fail to reject it or you accept it. so whatever uh, conclusion you receive on the p-value versus the significance level side it's going to be the same uh, for the t-statistic and critical value so here if the t-statistic is less than the critical value so this is equivalent okay it's either this one or this one this is the equivalent to it okay um, and again this would be something like you have this graph and you have here uh, a critical uh, the critical value under the 5% is 1.96 or negative 1.96 so suppose that I have uh, a number for the t statistic that is less than the critical value so uh, suppose that it's somewhere less any number so suppose that I'm just making any number so suppose the critical value is 1.96 and the t statistic is uh, 1.24 so it's less okay so in this situation you would say that t stat is low and then someone is going to tell you what do you mean it's low it's lower than the critical value all right the cv critical value so that means you reach the same conclusion uh fail to reject null so the null is true okay so it's either you use the the significance level or use the critical value okay um, what else I want to tell you uh, so here I used 5% which is the default in uh, our course or generally in econometrics it's the default in stata uh, I want you to think about the significance level this way so you have let's say uh, significance level um, 1% you have significance level of 5% you have a significance level of 10% those are usually the three options that we have what does it mean so if I uh, I say this is the number uh, of times you repeat a certain experiment or you repeat a test okay so number of repeating a certain test and you want to check how many times I reject so number of rejections and the number of rejections in other words that the expectation of Y is not equal to mu Y okay so you want to see how many times you reject that so 1% means that if I repeat this test 20 times I rejected 0.2 times so that means it's very conservative right this one is telling me if I do the test 20 times I will reject only one time so it's a little bit more flexible okay this one is telling me if I do the test 20 times I allow you to reject two times so this is the most flexible right so this is the very uh, conservative one you do test and you allow yourself only 0.2 times of rejection you don't want to do a, the error like more than 0.2 times this one is more flexible you allow yourself to reject two times or twice this is the one that is in between and this is the one that is mostly used in economic uh, applications which is the five percent and that's why you find stata um, 
we use uh, uh, use it as the default. I want you also to think about significance level of 1% is equivalent to confidence level of 99% and that's why we say it's very conservative because it it basically requires you to be very confident about the results and that's uh, usually used in the medical field uh, because when you try to perform a certain test on a certain medication uh, which people are going to use it as medication you, you want to be 100% almost 100% sure right uh, but when we do it in economic applications we are more uh, relaxed so this one is like the conf confidence level of 95%. I'm allowing myself 5% rejection. And this one is the confidence level of 90%, which is the most flexible uh, test. Okay. So if I'm telling you confidence level of 95, you understand that I'm talking about significance level of 5. Okay. Uh, how to compute the critical uh, value so uh, to compute the critical value so let me talk about the five percent so for the five percent uh, if you want the critical value for the t statistic right if i'm saying that i'm allowing myself five percent rejection which means that out of 20 times i reject once and if I'm talking about a two-sided test, then I have to divide this 5% into two parts. So this part is 2.5% and this part is 2.5%. Okay. Uh, in other words, uh, when I check the area less or equal to 2.5%, it's like I'm looking at this area. I want to find the area shaded region less than 2.5 percent the remaining is actually 97.5 percent right so the remaining is 97.9 percent so when you uh, check the table uh, which is the standard normal table okay so the standard normal table, um, you want to find 97. So you look at the, you, now we are looking at 97.5. So we are looking, sorry. So we are looking inside the table to find, we are looking inside the table, right? To find the critical value. So I'm looking here inside the table to find the critical value, which is like on the column side or this row. Uh, so 97.5 is it's like here right 97.5 so the critical value uh, actually you can also use this but do, let's go for the smaller one so 97.5 then the critical value is going to be 19 six so your critical value for this one is going to be uh, one nine six and that's why uh, when it comes to uh, saying the critical value of the t-statistic so it 1.96 and negative 1.96 and this is the shaded region for the equivalent p value this is the 2.5 percent for the significance uh, level okay so it's uh, every time you're performing a test you compare either the t statistic with critical value so you're talking about the numbers or the p value with significance level so you're talking about percentages it's either or they are equivalent okay uh, again as long as um, I, I don't specify which test you use you can use whatever you can use the one that you prefer okay so I'm gonna stop here and I want you to continue reading uh, chapters 2 and 3